I'm Luke Brotherton, Professor of Theological Ethics at the Divinity School here at Duke. This is my new book, Christ and the Common Life, Political Theology and the Case for Democracy. In it, I address three core questions that confront people of faith when it comes to politics. These are, first, how should we respond to the suffering, injustice and poverty either we experience ourselves or we see around us? Second, how do we forge a common life with those not like us? And lastly, third, how can we transform the imbalances of power without killing or coercing each other so that a more just and loving form of life might emerge, one in which the flourishing of each is recognised as connected to the flourishing of all? The book explores how Christians down the ages and the contemporary context have addressed these questions. And in doing so, it, but the book provides an introduction to the relationship between Christianity and politics, exploring how each of these questions demands both a political and a theological response, and how these responses kind of intersect with each other. The book also examines how democracy came to be understood by Christians as an expression of neighbour love. The first part reflects on questions I began with in dialogue with particular traditions some explicitly Christian, such as Catholicism and Pentecostalism, and others more ambiguously so, such as humanitarianism, which has theological roots, but understands itself today as non-religious. In the second part, I reflect on some key practices and commitments, such as tolerance and secularity, that make the cultivation of a common life with others possible. And in the third and final section, each chapter explores key concepts such as economy, sovereignty and democracy that are the building blocks of a common life. At the heart of the book is a basic challenge we are confronted with when encountering others not like us and with whom we might disagree, rad often radically so. We can either kill them or we can create systems of domination to coerce them into doing what we want or we can form some kind of common life with them through politics. The book sets out how Christians can and should go about taking up the third option, and in doing so, fulfill the basic Christian commitment to love God and neighbour.